welcome to our lesson 6, differentiation. We are now moving towards the end of the topic and we are going to look at application of differentiation. Differentiation is applied in many areas and uh, we will only look at two areas in which it is applied and one of the areas we are going to look at is application in kinematics. Kinematics. Kinematics is taken from kinetic and mathematics. So this is just uh, the mathematics of motion. In simple terms. So we will be looking at the mathematics of movement. In motion, we have what we call distance. And uh, distance from one place to another in a certain direction is known as displacement. Displacement. We have speed, but speed in a certain direction is known as velocity. So these two are vector particles because they have direction. And the two cannot take place unless there is some time. So as you move from school to home, you think a vehicle or whatever you use, you are displaced from school to home. You cover some distance S. And that was at a certain speed, but in a certain direction. We can call the direction from school to home. And you use a certain velocity V. And depending on how far the displacement is from school, how far your home is from school, you cover a certain time. There are some who cover. 30 minutes, 1 hour, 2 hours, a whole day, 12 hours, depending on where their home is. So, time t. And when these two change, when there is some change in velocity with the time, we come up with an, another variable which is called acceleration. And it is given symbol A. So all this displacement S, velocity V, acceleration A, they depend on time. They depend on time. The change of displacement with time is velocity. The change of velocity with time is acceleration. So the common thing to all of them is time T. So in the mathematics of movement, displacement changes with the time. And the change of displacement with the time, change of displacement with time is the one we call velocity. We call that velocity. The change of velocity with the time we call it acceleration. I hope you are seeing some kind of differentiation here. So this is change of velocity. I wrote S to be change in V. So when you differentiate an expression of S, for example, if you are given S the displacement obeyed by a certain particle as t squared plus 3t minus 4. And we are told that a certain particle is displaced obeying this equation. And you are asked to find the equation for velocity. What will you do? You will differentiate the equation for displacement s ds over dt is our velocity and we differentiate normally the way we are differentiating. I know here we are used to y and here we are used to x but now it is s and t but we differentiate normally so ds over dt is equal to 
no more differentiation. This will give you 2t plus 3. So the equation for velocity for this particle will be this one. What if we are told to get the equation for acceleration? To get acceleration, it is dv over dt. So dv over dt is the one that is giving us acceleration. And it is equal to, we differentiate this now. We are differentiating the equation for velocity. And it is equal to 2. We differentiate this. So the acceleration of that particle is 2. It is important to note that when you are dealing with the, the mathematics of movement, it is important that you put the units. Like this will be in meters, the displacement is in meters, the velocity is normally in meters per second, and the acceleration is in meters per second squared. Let us take an example and see how we apply uh, this kind of knowledge. But before we do that, I want to give you a summary. This is, I want to put acceleration here. So when you are moving from displacement to velocity, you differentiate. From velocity to acceleration, you differentiate. So we can draw an arrow going down like that. And we write, you want to move down in that direction, then you differentiate. Let alone in the next topic, we will be looking at the arrow going upward. If you want to get uh, the equations when you're going upward. But for now, we want to go downward from displacement to velocity to acceleration. And when we are taking that trend downwards, we will be differentiating in each case. Let's do one example. Then I give you an exercise. I will just read you my notes. A body moves in a straight line such that its distance s meters after t seconds is given by the equation s is equal to 3t plus 5t squared minus a third t cubed. Find, find one the maximum velocity of the body. That's one. Find two the time at which the body was momentarily at rest. This is the time at which the body changes direction. If it was moving up, for it to move down, it must have stopped here. So we are actually looking for the time at which the velocity is zero, or we are looking for the time at which the velocity is maximum. Roman 3 is an example. Find the acceleration of the particle at t is equal to 1. Find the acceleration at t is equal to 1. Okay, let's go through the example. We start by finding the maximum velocity. You cannot find the maximum velocity before you find the equation for velocity. And I have the equation for displacement. To get the equation for velocity, I differentiate the equation for displacement. And you differentiate here to get 3 plus 
30 minus t squared. That is the equation for velocity. The question requires that we get maximum velocity. Back to the lesson for stationary points. At the maximum point or at the minimum point, the gradient of the curve is zero. So at maximum velocity, then the, 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 the displacement is going to be at maximum velocity, you differentiate velocity and equate to zero. Because it means the body is not accelerating. It is not changing uh, the speed. It is just moving at that particular time. So at maximum velocity, we will differentiate velocity and equate it to zero. Then we will get that time that we have got in there and equate it to the equation for velocity. So to get maximum velocity, I need to differentiate velocity again and equate to zero. So differentiate here, you get what? You get 10 minus 2t. I know this is the equation for acceleration. And at maximum velocity, you differentiate velocity equate to zero. So if I was to get maximum distance, I differentiate distance equals to zero. If I wanted maximum acceleration, I will differentiate acceleration and equate to zero. So the variable which is required, whether maximum or minimum, is the one we differentiate. Then we equate it to zero and get the time. So we know this is the equation after we differentiate velocity equates to zero. So 10 minus 2t is equal to zero at maximum. So we get our value of t is equal to what? 5. But the question requires that we get maximum velocity itself. So we will take this 5 and equate it here in the equation for velocity. So v is equal to we substitute this 5. 3 plus 10 divided by 5, where there is t is equal to 5, minus 5 squared. This gives you 3 plus 50 minus 25. And that gives you 38 meters per second. So this is the maximum velocity for this particular particle, which moves at that point. Please note very well. I have said at maximum velocity, you differentiate the equation for velocity and you put it to zero. If you have been asked maximum displacement, you will differentiate displacement equals to zero. Get time. Take that time you have gotten back to the equation of displacement. So that is how we get the maximum. Back to number two. You have been asked to get the time at which the particle is momentarily at rest. When the particle is momentarily at rest, note that V is zero. The velocity is zero. So we will take the equation for velocity, which we have gotten earlier. V is equal to 3 plus 10t minus t squared. And we equate that to zero. This is a quadratic equation. Uh, solve it and get the value of t. That will be the answer. You can solve. Uh, you can solve using a quadratic formula. You can solve using the the, 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 the factorization, whichever method. But I want you to, to get the equation or to solve that. Then you have been asked to get the acceleration as t is equal to 1. So you simply get the acceleration using this equation, we have also gotten it. You differentiate dv over dt. Differentiate here, you get 10 minus 2t. So get the acceleration as t is equal to 1. Simply substitute here, t is equal to 1. And you will get the answer as. So substitute here, t is equal to 1 and you will get your answer. 
So complete that, and I will give you further assignment in this uh, work in our other platform. You can practice more using uh, the exercises or the books that you love.